First of all, let's talk about serving should be rapid. Serving should be rapid. We gotta have, we have to have a prepared posture for service, right? You gotta be prepared. Boy Scouts motto, right? I only made it to life. Anybody an Eagle Scout in this room? You were an Eagle Scout? No kidding. So you know this motto then, don't you? Did you bring your Bible today? He's prepared. I'm glad you, I'm glad you held that up. You would have been the subject of an illustration for a long time, John. Be prepared. When I was a teenager, when I was a teenager, I, I used to play racquetball. You guys like to play racquetball? Yeah, who likes to play racquetball? I need a, I need a competitor. Bill, you like to play racquetball? No kidding. Anybody else? Leo? Okay. I see a little cutthroat going on here. So when, we were, when I was a kid, I was probably 13 or 14 years old, we, I played racquetball with some pros. Now, the pros were my mom and my dad. Okay, and my grandpa. And I remember I would chase that ball. I was a squirrely little kid. I could chase that ball all over the court. And here it is. I'm lying on the ground almost dead because I'm out of breath. And here my grandpa is, 60-some years old, sitting there, and he's like, ready to go, Joey? You know? Why are you looking all happy like that? You know? And he says, he says, you're doing it all wrong. And of course, that's what you want to hear from your grandpa. You want to hear, good job, Joey, keep it up. No, he says, you're doing it all wrong. He says, you know what you got to do? You got to center yourself in the court. Kind of get near the back a little bit. And he says, you have to stand there like this. And he says, you have to look at the front wall and you have to be ready. As you hear the ball hit over here, you got to hear that thing wing by you. And when you see it out of your periphery, he's telling me how to be ready. And he says, don't stand flat footed. He says, stand on your tiptoes and get ready. And so there I was getting ready. I still lost. Anyway, the idea is this. We have to have a, a ready posture. We have to have a ready posture. Charles Spurgeon said, keep the posture of an upright man ready for action, expecting further orders, cheerfully and patiently awaiting the directing voice. And it will not be long ere God shall say to you, as distinctly as Moses said, it's the people of Israel, go forward. Friends, let me tell you, when it comes time to preparing to serve other people, we have to be, have, a, have a ready posture. When we go to a gathering, and we say to ourselves, well, I know the gathering will be done at, say, 6 o'clock. You don't plan to leave at 6.05. You clear the schedule at till 7, and you say, I'm going to do whatever I can to help clean up. Now, <laughs> it's funny that we're having, everybody's going to be diving in the kitchen today. We have to have a ready posture. This is a really important thing. Now listen to this, two real quick subpoints. Uh, help who you can help. Help who you can help. This is a great Bible verse. Listen to this, Galatians 6.10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. When we have opportunity, prepare for that opportunity to help rapidly. Because a, a brother in need is a brother indeed, right? And a brother in need too much is a mooch. But you want to help him nonetheless, don't we? We have to be ready to help even the moochest of people. The ones that just keep on asking to borrow your tools, right? And you're like, I am so tired of borrowing out my tool, lending my tools out. You just want to buy them your own, their own tool, you know? It's like the person who always needs the drill. It's like, they're only $99. Just wait till Christmas. You just got to help them. You got to help them. Listen to this. Be ready to help people rapidly. Be in, the, in, a, in a ready mindset. Here's a couple quick applications. Look for an opportunity. I don't know how many of you wait for somebody to ask you for help as opposed to you opening your eyes and looking around and doing a little survey. Do a little survey from time to time. Look around and say, you know what? Who needs help? Got this one over here. They need help. Oh, the pastor, he needs a lot of help. You know, look for an opportunity to help people where you can help them. Here's another one. Do good to everyone. As we have, therefore, opportunity, let us do good unto all men. Do, do good to everyone. D don't have a... Uh, don't have a critical mindset of helping some and not helping others. Now, listen to this. Here's another great one. A good place to start is with fellow believers. Help those people whom you're fellowshipping with. Help the people in close proximity first. 
Do good to everyone, but especially to them of the household of faith. Why? Why do you think that is? Here's why I think it is. I think it's because it's those people who have the commission to go help other people. So you help the people who are supposed to go out and help other people. You see how that trickle-down effect works, right? You help the people that are going to go out and help the people. Start with the believers first. Those people in close proximity. Serve those ones. Now here's another good one. How about this? Help when you can. So help who you can, but help when you can. Proverbs 3.27 says, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it's in the power of the hand to do it. So, th th this is great. This verse takes the last verse and extends it further. Doesn't it? In the first verse, in this verse, it says, As we have the, therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men. So this is those people who are in need. This one is those people who are in a deserving mindset. These people deserve it. Withhold not good to them to whom it is due. How many of you have said before, they don't need help? They, 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 they have enough help. But when you start to think about what that means, listen, there are people out there who, who deserve to be helped. Now you guys say, well, well, nobody deserves help. Okay, fine, that's a semantic. But there are people out there that deserve it. And help them when you can help them. Listen, we're not always going to be able to help everyone, and we're not always going to be, help, be able to help the people that deserve it. But helping people is not just the people who are in need, but those people also who deserve it. Rapid service is a reflection of your readiness. Be ready to serve. Be ready to serve. If you're going over to, if you're, if you're with somebody who deserves to be served, and you say, and you say, well, I can help them, but they don't need help. But you still do good to them. If you have the power to help somebody who deserves it, it's your responsibility to help them. It's your responsibility. This one simple habit. Now listen, we've looked at a lot of habits. This is, our, this is our, our, our sixth one. A lot of habits are, are important to spiritual growth, but this is, this is important. You've got to help people. I mean, Christians are commissioned to help people. We help the people in need when we can, and the people who don't need it as much but deserve it. We need to help these people. 